can't feel my... I can't feel much of anything in this. Fish, but once it's dried in the sun a while, it'll be tasty enough. Tough, but I'm used to it.
Versus Americanus, the magnificent American black bear. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Beautiful. How fierce you must have been. That fur? You never even felt the cold, did you? If he hadn't preserved you, would anyone even know you'd disappeared? I hate to interrupt. Oh, I... Yes. <laughs> Hello, I... Oh, an outlander at the Shrine of Forgotten Beasts. Welcome. I'm Enjuk. Uh, Aloy. The Shrine of... what? When the old world still breathed, a great man built a tiny totem to this beast and stored the visage inside. When the totem is placed on the pedestal, the animal is painted onto the empty air. And the beast lives again. Well, almost. There are seven pedestals. Where are the other six figurines? I found this one in the wilds. Remembered the indentations in the pedestals here and saw how they matched the base of the totem. But as you say, it's one of seven, isn't it? <sighs> the great Montana recreations must have made more, but time has scattered them. So these totems, the images they show are of animals that no longer exist. They're gone, like the old ones. So it seems. <sighs> to think such magnificent creatures are lost to us, that we never even knew they were here. We rely as much on beasts as we do on machines. For food, for warmth, but do we study them with the same fervor? Yeah, I do, for example. I have this theory about foxes. Why do foxes have red fur? Think about what they eat. Meat? Raw meat. Bloody meat. See? Natural causation. Logical connections. It only makes sense. You've thought a lot more about foxes than I have. I've got a few more figurines for you, Enjuk. I should get going. Of course, of course. I've taken up so much of your time already. But I don't suppose you could keep an eye out for more figurines? If I run across any, I'll bring them your way. Versus Americanus. The magnificent American black bear. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. How would you like to find yourself cornered by that thing? I suspect I'd like it very much indeed. What a beautiful beast you were. The nuke might find this blue green stuff valuable.
Those are Banuk's spears sticking out of that thing's back. I'm not the first to try to take you down, am I? Banur abandoned the cut during the war. Abandoned us to Karja. I didn't think the Tormek still had any life in it. But I was wrong. I've never traveled for the south in the grave. In the old days, the mad sun came. It would be my honor to speak with you. I've heard of you, Antris. Each of the many verses of your song tells of an impossible victory. The notes echo across the cut. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. That I know. My song used to echo around Banur. Omnak, the hunter of legendary machines. That's why I'm here. For another. They call it the Claws Beneath, or they did when I was younger. Its defeat would have given my song a fine end. I, uh, I used to travel between Banur and the Cut without stopping to sleep. But this trip, my bones ache, Huntress. But you, out hunting Aratak, leading your own Werak, if half your song is true, you are the only hunter I trust to go in my place. You want me to hunt for you? Not just for me, no. For an old friend. You want me to hunt in your place? Is that some kind of Banuka custom? Well, perhaps it should be, but no. We survive and we prevail, until we fail to do either. I confess, this is not easy for me. For any other machine, I would die as I have lived. A new hunter, weapon raised. But too many good lives have been lost to the claws. Throwing my old corpse atop the pile accomplishes nothing. Better to live in a world without the claws than to die while it still makes children orphans. Sounds like you've got a reputation. To be Banuk is to push your body to its limits. I found my limits higher than most. Fearsome machines needed killing, and in my youth, I found I had a talent for killing them. Even now, my name carries such weight that when the claws beneath re-emerged, the Werak came to me. Do you still have the same faith in yourself that your Werak seems to have? Perhaps I did before I held my bow in shaking hands. Noticed, for the first time, the spots on my knuckles. What a strange thing it is to be old. To stare backward and see such distance, but to stare forward at a looming wall. This machine, the claws beneath, why travel all the way to the Cut just to hunt it? Some songs. They include a refrain. The return of a past moment. It seemed fitting. You've hunted this thing before. Must have been twenty winters past. 
We were so close to bringing the Claws to bay. Closer than anyone else ever got. We? Me. And my friend. He was a chieftain of my Warak then. A skilled hunter. Every few years, the Claws would emerge in a new location. I knew of two chieftains he'd sent to their burial pyres. My friend became the third. This hunt... I had hoped to complete it in his honor. This is obviously important to you, Unak. Are you sure you want someone else to take down this machine? No, I am no longer a match for the claws beneath. If I ever was. If I face it, it will kill me. Of this I have no doubt. The Banuk blood in my veins screams at me to take on the claws myself. But I must see it brought down. And dead men see precious little. All right, Umnok. I'll do what I can. I've no doubt you can do quite a lot. The stories say the Claws Beneath returns here only once every six winters. The whispers I've heard say it now makes its home on the northeast edge of the cut. Huntwell. Wait. I fought a rockbreaker not far from here. It had Banuk spears sticking from its back. That's it. That's the Claws Beneath. Tell me. Does it still live? It wasn't easy, but I took it down. By the blue light. I knew you were a formidable huntress, but you surpassed my expectations. Here, to show my gratitude. Old Grid and his bandits think nothing of killing you. They fill your guts just to steal a single arrow from your quiver. None of the southern tribes rival from the western Some escape. 